Good evening and welcome to the CUNE Academy for this installment of AP Government, where we are building responsible voters one video at a time. All right, today we're going to talk a little monetary fiscal policy. All right, you will be working on both of these, or more or less fiscal policy, in class on Tuesday. We're going to do some budget simulations. They're already up on Moodle uh, if you want to take a peek at, uh, at those. Okay, uh, monetary policy is something we're going to get into a little more later in our. Um, bureaucracy chapter, which is a couple chapters from now. But monetary policy is essentially the regulation of the money supply, okay, and determining how much money is in circulation. And that is done exclusively by the Federal Reserve, or what we call the Fed. Now, they're in the news this week because the uh, guy that was in the running to be the new chair of the Fed, Larry Summers, who is extremely controversial, you, you look that up a little more on your own, uh, withdrew his name from consideration. Okay, um, But the Fed does that. They regulate the money supply, control inflation, adjust interest rates. Okay, And you can pause the video and kind of write some of this down, but we'll be coming back to monetary policy later. What I want to get into more is fiscal policy, which is controlled by the executive branch, who proposes a budget annually, okay? So he proposes what he wants, and then the legislative branches are the ones that actually pass it, and that would be both the House and the Senate uh, are involved in that process, okay? So the simple definition of fiscal policy is tax, you see that nice and big, and spend, all right? How the government taxes, how the government spends to effectively run the economy. All right, now as far as taxation policy goes, one of the things you'll be doing in the budget simulation is deciding where your money is going to come from, okay? Uh, income tax is what we always think of. It's a, an important method, but it's not the most important method. Okay, we should know that income tax comes from the 16th Amendment. Uh, start working at 16, that amendment's what gives you uh, your taxes. All right, and there are three different kinds of income taxes. There's a progressive tax. Progressive tax is one that hits higher income people with a greater percentage of the income. Right now, we have a progressive income tax, so somebody like you, who's probably making $250,000, $300,000, you'll pay 35% of your income in taxes, but poor soul like uh, me or Mr. Gorski, we're only paying maybe 25%. So we pay less of a percent and we make less money. Just kidding about that. Uh, there's a regressive tax. Regressive tax uh, is also um, a type of income tax. This is one that hits poorer income people more than higher income people. So that would be an example of something like a sales tax or a sin tax on like alcohol or cigarettes, okay? Regressive hits the lower income harder. So when you go pay buy those cigarettes and you're a poor person, you might be paying, you know, 2% of your income for the cigarettes, but that rich person would be paying 0.0007% of their income or something like that. And then a flat tax is essentially where everybody pays the same rate. And that is what we have in Illinois income tax. Every single person in Illinois pays 5%. So yes, the rich people pay more, but it's the same percent of their income. Okay, and 46% of all the revenue come from the income taxes. Okay, there are corporate taxes. They account for 12% of federal revenue, and that is anywhere between 15 and 35% of the income of the corporation. Okay, um, and that's usually a fight uh, in election years as to whether or not we're going to cut the corporate tax rate. Because the higher your corporate tax rate, yes, you're making more money, but the greater incentive there is to take jobs overseas. Okay. There are social insurance taxes or entitlement taxes. All right? um, Social Security has a 6.2% flat tax that is paid by the employer and the employee. So those of you that have a job, it's a party fantasy. 6.2% right? of your check goes to Uncle Sam, and party fantasy is kicking in another 6.2% uh, that they are paying to the uh, federal government to match yours. Okay? That number is capped. I'm going to make up a number here, but I think it's about $107,000. Okay? So you only pay a tax on the first $107,000 you earn. After that, you're not taxed. So um, those are your parents that are making more than $107,000. Probably come September, October, November, they start getting bigger paychecks because they've maxed out their Social Security contribution for that particular year but it is still a flat rate for everybody. Medicare is 1.45% of uh, your income, and that accounts for 36% of the revenue. Excise taxes, you should remember this from our Whiskey Rebellion last year. Um, that's on Tabasco, gasoline, airline tickets, etc. That only amounts for 2.7% of the revenue. Not done to make money, more or less to discourage or encourage behavior. Estate taxes, we also call this the death tax. This is when you retire or I'm sorry, when you die, you retire, I guess, but you're also dying, um, you pay um, anywhere between 
30 and 35 percent to the government of your estate okay uh, that's after the first million dollars so if your grandparents die and they will you two million dollars you got to pay 35 percent to the government you get to keep the rest okay that only counts for 1.2 percent of the revenue and that goes back to the progressive era when rockefeller and carnegie imposed that okay and then customs duties and tariffs are only 1.1 percent of revenue so as you can see when we play with the budget Income tax and the social insurance taxes are the biggies, okay? So here's how the federal budget process sort of plays out, okay? Um, and we'll, uh, we'll go here for a little bit and then uh, pause it and start over again. Okay, so um, the process, the way it works, okay? We have entitlements, all right? <clears throat> we talked about those being Social Security, Medicare, and so, so on. This is a very important definition you want to make sure you get down, okay? An entitlement is a federal program that guarantees, all right, and you have to pay, you have to get it paid, a specific level of benefits to persons who meet requirements set by law, okay? So when you make this note card, I believe the term is individual entitlements, okay? It has to be something about federal, something about a guaranteed, okay? Benefits, all right, to people that meet requirements, okay? So Social Security, if you are 67 years old, you are guaranteed to have the federal government give you money, all right? It is um, a guaranteed program for all, okay? Persons are entitled to the benefits if they meet the criteria set by the federal government. Medicare, I believe, is 65. If you reach 65, you are entitled to Medicare benefits, okay? Because you are part of the program, okay? And the spending on entitlements is mandated by federal law, so Congress cannot choose not to pay it. They would have to pass a new law to say we're not going to pay it. Okay, so it's kind of tricky because obviously, you know, if Congress did try to say get rid of Social Security, it would be filibustered and the existing law would stay on the books. So it's kind of tricky how these entitlements got written. Once you have them, you cannot take them out without a new law. Okay, we'll stop there. I'll finish the rest of this um, in a few minutes. So thanks for listening to the CUNE Academy. And remember, politics is not a spectator sport.